Hi, I'm Oscar. In June 2016, I travelled to Angola to meet up with my friend Alfie. Together, we completed the first ever source-to-mouth navigation of the Kwanzaa River, a journey of over 1,300 kilometres. Over our 32-day journey, we kayaked, we hiked, and we waded. We met a whole host of interesting people, from security forces to diamond miners, farmers and fishermen. Things didn't always go smoothly. We were chased by hippos, bitten by insects and picked up some nasty injuries. We also crashed and sank the kayak in some rapids, losing a load of our gear. Oh, and just to top it all off, the Angolan security forces arrested and detained us for four days, threatening us with deportation. Despite all these problems, on July 6th, we paddled out into the Atlantic Ocean and completed our journey. This is the story of how we did it. Angola was a Portuguese colony for five centuries. The Angolan people won their freedom in 1975 after a 13-year battle for independence. Once the Portuguese had left, Angola descended into a bloody civil war which lasted until 2002. The legacy of all this fighting is that Angola today is one of the most landmine-affected countries in the world. These mines have taken thousands of lives and injured an estimated 80,000 Angolans. It took us nine months to plan this journey, and one of the first things that we decided was that we'd like to try and raise money for a charity that was working to remove these landmines. The Halo Trust is the oldest and largest humanitarian landmine clearance organisation in the world, working in 16 countries and territories, including Angola. We set our fundraising target as £7,055, which is about US dollars This was enough to pay for one month of work by a Halo demining team. This would result in the clearance of around 4,000 square metres of minefields in a place called Quito Carnavale in the southeast of Angola. Quito Carnavale was the scene of a huge battle during the Angolan Civil War in 1987 and now has the unfortunate title of Africa's most mined town. The Halo Trust was extremely supportive of our plan and offered to help us with logistics for the expedition. When we started planning the trip in August 2015, Alfie was still living in Luanda, whereas I was based in London. Alfie had to spend hours poring over satellite photography to plot out a route and work out which sections of the river were navigable and what the casualty evacuation procedures were going to be. Alfie was also in charge of running around various ministries and getting us the necessary paperwork for the trip. We had no idea what paperwork was required and we're pretty sure the ministries didn't either, but we thought it might be useful to have official looking documents. Bits of paper with stamps on them are always good to wave around at the various police checkpoints we were inevitably going to be stopped at. 